Hello and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we will look at how to set up a Hopper V virtual machine on Windows 10. And this exercise is also applicable to Windows 11. So let us begin. We will begin today's video by going to our web browser and looking at the hardware requirements for setting up Hopper V on Windows. We'll open up my web browser. I have two articles. The first article is titled Step-by-Step -step, Enabling Hyper-V for Use on Windows 11. And then the second article is How to Enable Hyper-V on Windows 10. In this article, we want to pay attention to our hardware requirements. And the hardware requirements is in step one. So when you look at the hardware requirement, if you want to enable Hyper-V on Windows 11, you need the Windows 11 version to be either Windows 11 Pro or Windows 11 Enterprise. The second part of the requirement is a 64-bit processor with second level address translation. The third requirement is a minimum of four gigabyte of RAM. And then the fourth requirement is you need a BIOS that supports hardware virtualization. When we come to the second tab that has enable Hyper-V on Windows 10, the check requirements is pretty much the same. So for Windows 10, you need Windows 10 to be Windows 10 Enterprise or Professional, which is Pro or Education. You also need a 64-bit processor that supports SLAT. You also need a CPU that has virtualization capabilities and you need a minimum of four gigabyte of RAM. So the hardware requirements for both Windows 10 and Windows 11 are the same. The next step is for us to check our current hardware where to see whether we meet these requirements. To do that, I will minimize this window. I will click in the search at the bottom and then type system information. So when you type syst, it will show you system information. So you click that, it opens up the system information. In my system information window, I will first look at the OS name. My OS name is Windows 11 Pro, which is a supported version of Windows for Hyper-V. The next thing to look at is the system type. So when we come to system type, Type. my system is x64 base pc so that's the second requirement the third requirement has to do with the minimum required memory when we look at the installed physical memory i have 16 gigabyte of memory which is more than the required memory of full gig usually for hardware requirements the bigger is better the fourth and final requirement has to do with a bios that support virtualization to confirm if your computer supports virtualization in the bios you restart your computer and usually for computers it will either ask you to press f2 or f8 or f10 or f12 or escape so depending on the model of computer you have you will use either of those keys to enter into your system BIOS. I have two images that I would like for us to look at. The first one is an image of a Dell BIOS. On the left, when you click on virtualization, below virtualization, it has the option to enable virtualization. All you want to do is make sure to have enable virtualization technology turned on at the top and the bottom. The second image is an image of an HP laptop. For this particular model of HP laptop, when you click on events in BIOS, you want to make sure to turn on those two virtualization options. After confirming these four requirements, then we proceed to the next step. The next thing is to press window logo and arrow. It will open run and you type appwiz.cpl. You either press enter or you press OK. When you do that, it will open up the programs and features. So I will just expand the window. On the left where I have turn windows features on and off, I will click on that. The next thing to do is to enable Hyper-V. So in the list where I see Hyper-V, I will click in the little box at the left and I will click OK. When I click on OK, Windows will begin to install the Hyper-V features. After the installation of the Hyper-V features, the next thing to do is to restart your computer. To do that, you can click restart now, which will restart your computer or you can click done restart and restart manually. So I will take done restart and I will pause the recording and then restart and then we will continue with the recording. After restarting the computer, the next thing to do is to open Hyper V Manager. So I will start by clicking in the search and just type Hyper and then I will click on Hyper V Manager and that will open up our Hyper V Manager. This brings us to an end of this episode. In the next episode, we will begin to create virtual machines and we can start by installing Windows operating system and other operating systems. So make sure to subscribe to the channel 
and share this video with someone who will find it useful and make sure to leave a comment below that you subscribe as always if you have any questions or feedback make sure to leave those in the comment section below until we meet in the next episode take care goodbye for now